Now is the gentleman from Utah. Mr. Speaker, I ask for unanimous consent that all, mem all members have a five-minute legislative days to revise and extend their remarks to include ex extraneous uh, material on H.R. 798 as amended. The res resolution now under consideration. Without objection. Mr. Speaker, I yield myself uh, as much time as I might consume. Gentlemen's recognized. I rise today in support of H.R. 798, condemning the hateful acts of anti-Semitism spreading like wildfire across American college campuses. Last year, I made my first trip with a few of my colleagues to Israel, where we were welcomed by Jewish citizens of all backgrounds, black, European, Russian, Arabian, and Palestinian. During a visit to a Jewish family's home near the Gaza border, I held a bomb fragment that had landed in their front yard. I saw the lifestyle where the norm was always being on edge. There were bomb shelters, bomb shelters built on, on both ends of elementary soccer, soccer fields and at every bus stop. One of my colleagues asked our guests, you live so close to people who literally hate you simply because of your religion and culture, why do you stay? Her answer stuck with me because I love my country and this is our home. None of us could have imagined a little over a year later the pure evil that would visit that home. They never knew how vulnerable they were from satanic barbarism. Those who would film, call home, and boast of the torch and death they rained down on innocent, defenseless men, women, and children. What does evil look like? The German Nazis attempted to hide their acts. These Nazis have posted their acts on social media for the world to see and to remember. A pregnant mother shot in the face, her baby cut from her womb and then beheaded. A female rap, ra raped with such evil ferocity that her pelvis was broken. She was then murdered. Grandmothers, children, and babies huddled together and then burned alive. A young 20-year-old young woman shown half naked and unconscious as she was paraded through the streets of Gaza, tortured and desecrated by these cowardly de de uh, devils. She was later found beheaded. Within hours, 1,400 innocent, defenseless men and women, children in their bedrooms, teenagers celebrating peace at a music festival, were murdered without mercy. And what was the response on American campuses? At Cornell University, a professor called the Hamas attacks exhilarating and energizing. At George Washington University, less than four miles from where I stand, students projected the phrases from the river to the sea and glory to our martyrs on the side of Gilman Library, a building named after Jewish alumni. These phases, very phrases, or explicit anti-Semitic call for violent eradication of Jews in the state of Israel. At Cooper University, I'm sorry, Cooper Union, Jewish, Jewish students were forced to lock themselves in the library to avoid a rabid mob chanting murder, murder to the Jews. These hate-filled college students have no shame and no fear. Imagine accountability that they would face if they were chanting murder to the blacks or murder the trans. As this mob pounded on the front door of the building, the Jewish students were quietly ushered out the back door. This is America, 2023, not 1960. No students, regardless of race, creed, color, religion, should ever have to use the back door of a campus library out of fear of their safety. Not now, not ever in the United States of America. I stand today to strongly condemn the pure evil of Hamas, and affirm Israel as our greatest ally in the Middle East and proclaim our unwavering support as they assert their right to self-defense. With that, I urge my colleagues to support H.R. 798, and I reserve the balance of my time.